Hi, this is Margo. This is Monday evening, July 22, 2019, 7.04 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. I hope everyone is doing as well as possible. It's been really hot where I am. It was 99 degrees here in Reno today, but, um, you know, we don't have the humidity that a lot of places around the world do, so it makes it a little more tolerable so anyway just praying for everybody so we're gonna do a an earthquake update tonight so we're looking at USGS for all magnitudes for the last 24 hours and we're showing 810 earthquakes worldwide of those, 33 are 2.5 magnitude or higher. And also, right now, 554 of those are in the event center. Event center. It's, sounds like a party. Um, event area down in Southern California. This morning, I took a screenshot of this area at 9.23 and it was, they had 540 earthquakes down here at that point and 768 worldwide. So it's about the same, uh, 554. So it's increased a little bit. Um, down here in the event area and it's also increased in the number of earthquakes worldwide so let's go ahead and start and I wanted to show um, the sulfur dioxide pop popped up very quickly this is this is the Pacific view of sulfur dioxide from today from CAMS and the, we're seeing a release there is a ground release of sulfur dioxide right up here in the Seattle and Van Vancouver area and we're seeing this stream all the way down across the Pacific here's another one, it looks like it's right above the Juan de Fuca plate. Here's another release in the Alaska area where we were seeing all those earthquakes along with volcanoes. There's also a surface release here coming up out of the Pacific Ocean. So we're seeing this, these are all along the edge of the tectonic plate where the south of where the Pacific plate meets the North American plate and so as you saw in my show from last night or in my announcement I've been seeing this um, <clears throat> well ever since I started Earth, earthquake reporting I've been seeing a correlation between release of sulfur dioxide and earthquakes sometimes there is an, an, a distinct signature if it's like an exclamation point then that's a very sharp release that could be connected to a, an earthquake or it can, if it's an ongoing release like this, it could just be kind of a blob thing. So, I just wanted to show people that. So, this is an indication that these plates are all moving. And, right over here, this is that Cascadia subduction zone. The Juan de Fuca plate is right here in the Pacific. It's all connected right up here with Alaska and so there you go I just wanted people to be aware of that 
and no one else has put together this whole sulfur dioxide and earthquake thing. No one. I don't know why, but I'm the only one, and I don't know if anyone cares or not, but, you know, I think sulfur dioxide is the key in understanding what's going on with the earthquakes. And even though we're seeing huge, huge amounts of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, it's still hot around the world. I mean, it's not cooling the world any. And methane levels are increasing, and we're having record temperatures ever. So whoever has that theory that sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere is going to cool things, I think that's wrong. So there's that. So let's look at our earthquakes now. So let's see what's about to come off the map here. There's a 2.7 in Fairview, Oklahoma, or near there. This came in at 7.20 last night. So let's start there. Let's go to all magnitudes just in case there were others. Right here, uh, 2.7 Fairview, Oklahoma. This came in at 9.20. I mean 7.20 last night, 5.9 kilometers deep. So that's getting on up there. Uh-oh, what am I doing? Well, I lost one of my windows. Hold on, I want to fix this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I was on, I was actually on two and a half magnitudes. So let's go to all magnitudes here for Oklahoma. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. It started with this 2.7 at Fairview at 7.20 last night, then a 1.3 total, 1.3 Crescent, 1.4 Spencer, 1.44 Cherokee and a 1.8 at Perry. So let's pick him back up, especially having a 2.7 there. That's getting up there. We're seeing some higher magnitude earthquakes in in the United States, actually. So let's go back to our two and a half magnitude or higher. Uh oh, too far. Okay, this one is at nine o'clock, so. All right, so let's start <coughs> down here off the coast of Nicaragua. There was a 4.6 near San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua, at 3.31 this afternoon, right near that red line. Well, I see that USGS has put the red lines back. South America is clear. Next, over here, north of New Zealand, 4.9 near L'Esperance Rock at 514 this morning and all these times are Pacific times because that's my time zone. Next we've got two right here in the ocean next to Amahai, Indonesia a 5.2 at 908 last night and a 5.5 at 306 this morning. Now let's look at this wave I think I checked these earlier. Yeah, there was no tsunami with these. I mean, we can check it again. No tsunami threat. So, there's that. So that's pretty good size. Two fives right there in a row. Now, coming around we're seeing a lot of movement on these plates. Remember the sulfur dioxide 
Here's a 4.9 near Marizzo Village, Guam at 9.52 last night. Here's a 4.5 near Iwo Jima, Japan at 12.51 this morning, 139 kilometers deep. Here's a 4.9 near Itbayat, Philippines at 9.06 last night. Here's a 5.1 near Ishigaki, Japan at 146 this this afternoon, 102 kilometers deep. These are all in the ocean. You know, some of these, if they were not in the ocean, they would cause a lot of damage. Okay, we saw Iwo Jima. Here's one just off the coast of mainland Japan, a 4.4 near Asahi at 510 this afternoon. Then we've got some up here in the Aleutian Islands. We'll look at those in a little bit. But we're seeing, seeing them all around these red lines. So these plates are moving, folks. And it's moving fast. Here in China, there was a 4.6 near Zunchang, China at 126 this morning. And then up here, a 4.7 near Irigal, China, at 532 this morning. Then down here, in Iran, it's on land, right next to the Strait of Hormuz. Look at this. Is this a coincidence? Seriously. This is so traveled with all of the oil tankers and everything. I don't know. Here's a 5.0 near Bandar A. Linge, Iran. This came in at 3.59 this afternoon. I bet they felt that. And plus there are lots of got to be a lot of um, oil drilling and processing and stuff like that and a 5.0 earthquake could cause damage so anyway there's that uh oh look this just came in another one down by Lesperance Rock New Zealand of 4.8 just came on the map it happened at 6.55 this evening. Okay, let's move on over to all magnitudes and we'll peek at Hawaii next. We've got six here today. Point six. And in point six, those are at Mauna Loa. 1.9 Pahala. 1.8 Pahala. 1.9 Kilauea. And another 1.9 Kilauea. Now these two at Mauna Loa were at negative depth. So those are lower magnitudes than what we saw the last couple of days. Now coming on over to the Caribbean we've got six here today 2.2, 2 2.6, 2.3, 1.7, 2.6 and a 1.1. 1 .1. Now even though this 2.6 was on land, that's not big enough to do damage. They might have felt a little bit of shaking, but that won't that won't do damage. Now coming on up to Alaska, including the Aleutian Islands, we're showing 83 here today. Of those, three are two and a half magnitude or higher. 
We've got a 4.3 near Attu Station out here in the Aleutian Islands. This came in at 6.53 this morning. A 3.8 near Semisopoknoi Island at 10.17 this morning. And a 3.3 .3 near Talkeetna at 12.19 this afternoon. So if we look at all magnitudes, we're going to go, we're going to see what's, what's cooking in this Cook Inlet. First of all, we're seeing an uptick in this little armpit area. This is where the Pacific Plate meets the North American Plate, where it curves around. So there's a lot of activity that happens here, and we're seeing an uptick right here. We're seeing 13 right here in this Cape Yakutaga area. 1.6 it looks like is, oh no, 1.8 is the highest here. So that's getting on up there. Ones right there. Okay, now we've got more activity coming on in. Now look at this Cook Inlet. It's cooking in the Cook Inlet. Look at this straight line. They're happening. Here's a 2.0 at Fritz Creek. 2.3 anchor point. So these are a little higher magnitude. 2.2 Homer. 1.8 Old Iliamna. And so on. Now here's Anchorage. 3 only three right here at Big Lake in Anchorage. These, these are not very big. Uh, um, 1.3 Willow. 1.3 Nikiski. What's this? Here's a 1.7 Valdez. So the higher ones are, I think, are significant. What's this cluster? <coughs> Look at this. We've got five here at Nikiski. We've got uh, the highest one is this 2.0. <coughs> so five right there. And we've got three of them at zero depth. And the other two at one kilometer. And now they're coming on up. Here's Here's that 3.3 .3 at Talkeetna. We're seeing some others near there. And then it's just spreading out as it's coming on up. Here's Fairbanks. Everyone's heard of Fairbanks. Over here at Kobuk, we have 16 here today. The largest is this 1.8, a couple of 1.8s at zero depth right at the surface and then up here in northern Alaska we've got nine here today 2.4 Arctic Village that's getting up there that's the highest one then the rest are ones so how many? eight and nine? Yep. So we've got a little cluster up here at Koktovik. All right, now coming down into the lower 48. We're showing 696 here. So let's get our calculator. Because I might have a brain fart and not do this right. 696 minus 548 from the event area and it was showing 148 for the rest of the lower 48. So that's an uptick. We already covered Oklahoma. Here in Texas we're showing a 2.8 at Mentone. Now coming on up in Arizona, that's clear. And now in Utah, we're showing 
2 at Enoch, a 1.5 and a 1.5, and a 2.3 at Gunnison, so that's an uptick in the magnitude, that 2.3, and then up here at Yellowstone, they just like to keep blasting. Here's our quarry blast. It's at Whitehall today. A 1.2 magnitude quarry blast at Whitehall, Montana at 9.24 this morning. So they got started early blasting. So we're showing 13 here today. So 12 if you take away the quarry blast. So we've got some clustering. We're going to start with this 2.1 at Cascade, Idaho. I think that's the only one there. And then a 1.9 at Dillon, Montana. A 0.8 Lincoln, Montana. 1.5 Driggs, Idaho. So let's zoom in to Old Faithful Geyser. We've got six here today. 0 0.7, 1.4, 0 0.8, 1.0, 1 1.4, and 1.4. So they're clustering. These started today at 647 this morning lasted until 741. Then coming on up here we've got two at Manhattan, a point eight and a zero. So those are very small. <coughs> and then we've got a point eight at Lincoln. I think that's it for the Yellowstone area. Oh, did I get this one? I'm having, yeah, 2.1 Cascadia. Cascade, not Cascadia. <clears throat> Got Cascadia on the brain. <clears throat> okay, in the Pacific Northwest here for Oregon and Washington, we're showing one of 1.6 at Castle Rock. This came in at 11.56 this morning. What is this near? Um, it's to the west of Mount St. Helens. Here's Mount St. Helens. Now I want to show the trimmer map. It's kind of stunning today. Um, actually, let's start. Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh, here we go. Let's start with yesterday's trimmers. Now this is shocking. 364 from yesterday. All clustering down here. Um, north of Medford in Oregon. Now this is right down here right in here and it's just across from this see how this Juan de Fuca plate does an arrow in like it's pointing in and it's pointing to this this little nub that goes out and that's where all those clusters were right here alright so that was yesterday on the trimmer map and the trimmers are what happened before they register earthquakes. And here it is from today. So far they're showing 194. They're showing a few up on the northern end of Vancouver Island. But look at how they've, they're have moving down. So we're seeing movement. They're spreading down. So we're actually seeing movement here. I think this indicates movement of this subduction zone. That's what I think. And that's all. That's all we got. 
and so they're moving down and look at all this activity in California we've got a little bit over here in Nevada but my gosh so here we're going to start in Northern California with a 1.2 at Hornbrook this came in at 525 today just about on the border between California and Oregon then here's one at Shasta Lake a 1.4 that came in at 10.02 last night and let's see where it is yep it's just north of the lake here's the lake happened right right above it remember that's a reservoir with a dam then to the east of Redding was a 1.6 near Viola at 8.16 last night now this is near well that's not too far from Shasta Lake and Lake Almanor is right down here and Chico is due south okay now over here of note we had um, of 3.7 on this Juan de Fuca plate I think this got downgraded I saw this something come in as a 4 I think it was a 4.0 or 4.2 up here when it came in this morning at 10.08 and it, they downgraded it to a 3.7 So the reporting station is Ferndale, but it's in the ocean, just west of Eureka. And a 2.7, just south of this Juan de Fuca plate, this came in at 11.59 today, or right at noon. So this is showing movement uh, with this plate. Here's the subduction zone. So I'm, I'm thinking something big is just about, about to happen especially when we see all of this activity look at this all the way down this red line that's the San Andreas fault line look at this this is insane and then we had a larger a much larger earthquake down here in Southern California a 4.2 now this came in as a 4.4 and they downgraded it to a 4.2 at 29 palms so we'll get into all of that in a minute but look 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 at how they're all lined up this is incredible that's an incredible amount so this is definitely showing movement of these plates so let's let's get Nevada out of the way um, in the Reno area here's a point eight near Incline Village it's actually in the mountains um, in the Mount Rose area so there's that <coughs> then we've got a couple down here in the Hawthorne area a point three and a minus point two and then down here in southern Nevada we have we have six here these are small zeros some of them are microquakes even under zero and up to 0.8 so that's it that's it for Nevada yep I thought I saw one out here in Pyramid Lake I think they took it off anyway now here at Mammoth we're showing four here today 0.6 point 0.3 six, point six, point and point 0.2 so those are small <coughs> here's our event area sounds like a rodeo the event this is the event area where everything's gonna happen let's get back to that 
in a minute. The event area is, you know, you can always go to the event area. That's why they call it the event area. There's always something happening, obviously. And this is day 18 since all that stuff started on July 4th down there. Okay, coming down here in Northern California. Here's a 1.9 at Brook Trails. Here's a 2.0 at Boonville. And the Geysers has 41 here today. Now that's a larger number. And these are ones in the ones range and under. Here's a 2.1 and so on. 1.4 Okay. Now, look Here's one in the bay, San Francisco, a 1.4 near Santa Venetia at 11.34 this morning. Here's one right on the red line, 1.5 San Francisco Zoo. It's actually in the ocean to the west of San Francisco Zoo. This came in at 10.06 this morning. Here's a, uh-oh, I missed one. 0.7 at Hillsboro. Here's a 0.8 at Portola Valley. Look at all of this. Normally we might see one or two along here, but oh my gosh. Here's a 0.8 at Gilroy. 0.9 Hollister. 1.6 Hollister. And it looks like, nope, there's only one there. 1.4 Ridge Mark, 1.3 Pinnacles, 1.1 Pinnacles, 1.9 Pinnacles, 0.9 Gonzales, 2.1 San Lucas. Oh, here's one in the ocean. 1.5 Lopez Point, 0.6 Parkfield, that's right on the red line. 2.5 Templeton. Okay. Here's an extension of the event area. 1.6 to Hachapi and 1.2 Mojave. One point four Casti Cas Castaic. Oh, I wanted to show you something. Where was it? Um, they took this one. Oh, they took it off the map. Um, I should have gotten a screenshot. There was one that came in at Corona this morning. Right down here. Corona. It was right up here. I can't remember, I think it was a 1 point something, 1 1.4 or something like that. This is Prado Dam right here. This is the Prado, this, is, this fills up, this reservoir fills up when it rains and stuff. So it's not always full of water, but the, the dam is right down here. I did some research because I wanted to see, this is the dam that straight line across. So the earthquake, it was right up here somewhere. I, I should have taken a screenshot, but it, you know, I thought, well, it'll be there. In the meantime, there's a quarry blast, a 1.3 quarry blast, a little bit southeast of Corona at Home Gardens. That was at 10.01, and 
We're seeing them peppered around here. 1.2 Silver Lake, 1.3 Chatsworth. So why would they take that off the map? Unless they don't want anyone to see it. Here's a 1.6 Progresso Baja, 1.4 Ocotillo. One point four Borrega Springs. What's this cluster? There's seven right there at Anza. So we're seeing some clusters. Let's look at this cluster. Here is eight at uh, twenty nine palms. It's all got started with this four point two that came in at nine twenty six this morning. Then of one point four at nine thirty three, two point two at ten forty eight, two point seven at twelve eighteen, one point zero two twenty four, one point zero two forty eight, one point two at three thirty, and a one point one at six thirty three. So they're still coming in. So these are like aftershocks after this 4.2. So that's up getting up there. So in the Southern California area, minus the event area, we're showing 47 here today. So that's an, a little bit of an uptick from what we normally see. Now let me see if I got all of the larger ones. <clears throat> yeah, I got I got um, 29 palms. <clears throat> all right. Now let's go to the event area and see. Well, right off the bat, you can see the movement spreading out, even though you know it's it's only five hundred and something earthquakes, but this is continuously. This means that they're coming on the map as fast as they're going off the map. They're still swarming, is what it means. So, here we go. Here we go. So, they're still lining up from southeast to northwest. Look at how it's moving out across those mountains. Here's the Coso area. And this is Olancha. And now they're moving up along the road here. I think this is 395. That goes in, yep. That goes into Nevada. Here's a little one by itself, a 1.6 at Wolford Heights. And we've got pretty good sized clustering going on at Johannesburg in California City. So, there are only nine that are two and a half magnitude or higher. I'm just going to call these off. and 3.9. So that's the largest one and it just came in at 636 this evening at Cyril's Valley. <coughs> So we have a huge amount of smaller earthquakes then. Mostly it looks like in the ones range there's a few twos. But they're mainly one and under. So they're still swarming. And it's ripping open. 
So let's zoom out and see what else might have come in while we were recording. And we got that one in New Zealand because there are two down there now. Let's come in up here at Alaska. Make sure we've got these 2.0 Cordova, 1.7 Valdez, and a 1.4 Sutton Alpine. So those are the latest ones in Alaska. So I think that's a wrap. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and sign off for tonight. Time is getting shorter. Tick tock. Um, it's just all winding down now. It's just a matter of not very long before we're going to see something huge happen. And I really hope everyone is ready spiritually. That's the best preparation you can do because eventually considering the climate change and the methane and everything no one's going to make it out alive no one so I love you guys and I'm praying for everybody so until next time God bless you go in peace and good night